Hello and welcome to this video series on animal health brought to you by Farmers Weekly. I'm Janine Ryan, the editor of Farmers Weekly. And in this series, we speak to experts in the field of animal health to help farmers make better decisions about their livestock concerns. My first guest is Mr. Nazim Kasim from the ARC. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you Thank doing? You for <laughs> Uh, so just to start off, can you please explain your role at the ARC? Okay, I'm, I'm a quality assurance officer at the Transboundary Animal Diseases Program, but I'm also currently acting quality assurance manager for the whole Honest to Poet Veterinary Research Center um, at, at, um, as part of the ARC. Okay, so let's start off with um, biosecurity. What, what is biosecurity? Okay, so basically, generally, biosecurity refers to the procedures or, or measures designed to protect the population from infectious biological or uh, biochemical substances. But in agriculture, biosecurity is basically is the prevention of disease-causing agents either entering or leaving any area where they can pose a risk that is farms, within farms, and to animals as well. And what is compartmentalization? So yeah, compartmentalization is actually um, a concept that was developed by the World Organization for Animal Health. And it's basically to introduce a, a concept where you can still continue with international trade, even though there's a disease outbreak situation. So it basically looks at compartmentalizing um, animals according to strict biological or biosecurity measures into subpopulations according to their health status. Is that allowed in terms of the um, animal health organization? Because I know that with like the foot and mouth disease outbreak, um, the compartmentalization hasn't been something that could be sort of used as a reason to continue exports. That would depend on the organization and as well, you know, trade relations between countries because both countries need to um, agree with the concept of compartmentalization so that they agree, you know, for import and export. Mm. How affordable is it to implement biosecurity on a farm? That will basically depend on the ultimate goal and also the level of production systems. For example, in extensive farming production systems, you know, the cost might not be that much because you're, um, it's growing, you know, large cultivars with low capital, low labor, as compared to intensive farming, where there's high capital and high labor cost involved. Although, you know, if you um, introduce simple measures, it can be quite inexpensive um, in, in, you know, in farms. Also, farmers must remember that the um, introduction of biosecurity measures far outweighs the cost incurred when a disease outbreak occurs. So what examples are there of um, cost-effective biosecurity measures? Um, simple things, for example, on a farm, you know, don't allow um, vehicles or dis only allow disinfected vehicles to enter the premises. Um, have a register of all visitors. Um, give visitors PPE, that's personal protective equipment, uh, and footwear to enter the farms and then also um, don't you know use equipment and uh, animal products between farms and then also try and keep away domestic and wildlife from feed pens water sources and also uh, pastures in terms of biosecurity what are the most important measures that farmers can implement from the get-go so to speak okay so the main aim of biosecurity is to protect animal health and to protect and increase animal production systems. And this is done through prevention, control, and management of biological risk factors. So that translates to bio-exclusion, bio-containment, and bio-management, respectively. So if I'm a new farmer and I want to implement biosecurity measures on my farm, what would you recommend as the first process that I should take? Okay, I think the first thing would be to, you know, fencing to prevent other animals from getting in and out. Because as you know, for example, foot and mouth disease can be transmitted thoroughly through contact between animals. So I think that would be the first thing. And then also um, uh, not allowing um, traffic in and out of the farm. And like I said before, if people come in, they should wear pr personal protective equipment and footwear as well that's disinfected before entering the farms. Great, thank you. <laughs> 
Thank you very much for joining us for this episode and we hope to see you in the next one.